listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, with your host, Vivian Bell. Well, it's declaration time, and our declaration here at She Who Believes the Podcast comes from Luke 1 and verse 45. I will be declaring this word from the English Standard Version. Remember, you can choose any version that you choose. We only ask that when you speak this and declare this word over your life, that you replace the word she, or in some versions, woman, with your very own name. Because we believe that the word of God is for us, that it is just as alive and active as it was when it was written, when it was spoken, when it transpired over 2000 years ago. So here we are again, Luke verse, Luke 1 verse 45, and it reads as follows. And blessed is Vivian who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Uh, Isn't that a great feeling to be able to personalize the word of God, to be able to know that his word is for you and to grab hold to it and claim it and make it yours because it is as children of God, his word is true for each and every one of us. Great day. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, I am excited to be with you guys today. I know I tell you guys that every week, but I am sincerely excited to be on this podcast because not just to say that I have a podcast, but it's always a pleasure and an honor to share the word of God with you too. And to to encourage you to strengthen your faith, to encourage you to have faith in God, to encourage you to believe what God has said about you and for you to be the she who believes the Lord. Hallelujah. I shared with you guys when I first started this podcast that I believe that in certain places in scripture where it seems really vague and there's like really not a name in a, a scripture, but there's a word or it'll say this, a particular woman or a particular man. I've always believed that it's those words are there so that we can plug our names in. Um, If if everything in the Bible, I believe, again, this is just how I feel about it, was um, talking about a specific person, we might be tempted to believe that God would only do what he does for those people and that he was just the God of those people and not the God of us as well. Lord, Lord, I thank you that he is, that he is not the same God. I, I, I love to plug my name into places. And even sometimes where there is somebody's name, like for instance, there's the prayer of Jabez, right? And that's in First Chronicles 4 and 10. And when I pray that prayer, I say, uh, um, and Vivian called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And God granted her what she requested. You see, I make the word real for me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to make the word, we have to always make the word real for us. I want to encourage you today to prepare yourself. That's the title of this today's podcast, Prepare You. Um, This is the last podcast of 2022. And as always, I'm like, Lord, what do I say? What do you want me to say? And sometimes I'll just be in the midst of prayer and worship and he'll just give me a word and he'll say, prepare you. Or he'll give me a one word, a thing like suddenly. Um, These are all things he's given me throughout this year, but He said to me earlier this week as I was praying, just in a place of prayer um, for others, not just for myself, but for others. And I was praying and he said, prepare you. And he said to prepare yourself, mind, body and soul for the things that I promised you. Prepare yourself for the things you've asked for. And I said, "Okay, Lord, well, what's the scripture you'd like me to share with your people? Right. And so he gave me Mark 11, 23. 
through 24. And um, I was really, really blessed this morning by the footnotes when I looked this up. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys in the Amplified, um, Bi- in the Amplified Bible version. And it reads as follows. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart and God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place. It will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I am, excuse me, for this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them. That whatever you ask for, like you currently asking for, it didn't say you asked ED, but it says ask as in a present tense. But then it says, believe that you have received them as in past tense, like they are already yours. So as I ask for something, according to the will of God, I know that I have received it. And it says, and they will be given to you. Hallelujah. They will be. So I love the thing I love. One of the things I love about God is his certainty, his definitiveness, how he's definite in his promises and his, 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 uh, the words and the things, the promises that he makes to us. He's he's definitive. He's definite. They're, they're definite. I often say that if you are entertaining, well, what if, what if, what if that's always from the enemy because what if spring confusion, it brings doubt, it comes against your faith. So that's going to always be from the enemy. God always speaks in definitives. He's definite in his promises. He's definite in his word. Excuse me. He is always, always a firm foundation. He's the keeper of his word. He is not a man that he should lie. God will keep every last promise he's made to you. And when you pray according to faith as a child of God, you can literally say to a thing that's standing in front of you that, hey, you got to move out of my way. You might be thinking, but hey, I said that last time and I'm right back here facing this same thing. But I want to challenge you to take another look at it. It might look like the same thing, but I want you to examine what you've learned. How God has prepared you for this round, the last one, two, or three times that you've gone through a particular thing. Something God said to me years ago, and when he said it to me, it was hard for me to grab hold to it, to be honest with you, because of the poor theology that I had been taught growing up about who God was and the warped kind of sense of who God was, right? It was, it, it, it was so, um, such a challenge that God spoke it immediately to my eight year old son. Like he literally spoke it to my son at the age of eight for him to speak that thing back to me. Right. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. And the Lord has just been, uh, just reminding me of who he is, of his presence, of the promises that he keeps. And, and, and in that time frame, what he said to me was this, and he had my son come to me and tell me it literally within minutes of him saying it to me because I struggled with it. Cause I was told that if you've gone through the same thing again, that you went through before that God is trying to teach you a lesson and you didn't learn the lesson the first time and that, um, you're doing something wrong and you're going to keep going through this same thing until you master it until you're perfect at it. Right? Well, I beg to differ it on that just a tad bit because of the experience that I had with God. He sent my eight year old son to confirm the word that he has spoken to me. And he said that it is not that you've done anything wrong that I see you, that I put you, that I've allowed you to be in this same position again, but it is because I trust you. I can trust you in this situation to still believe me, to still praise me and to not get outside of your character. And that really threw me, it blew me for a minute because I was like, ah, but maybe I've done something wrong, but it's always that lie of that we're not enough or that God is punishing us or that we are not good enough to get the blessings and to receive the things that God has promised to us. Well, in and of ourselves, we are not good enough. We are not worthy. We're none of those things, but Thanks be to God in heaven that he has imputed his righteousness upon us. So when God looks at us as his children, those who have our blood bought believers, those who have been baptized in Jesus name and who is just um, his children and who is chosen to, to, to accept Jesus as our savior, that we can speak a thing and it will be, we can declare a thing and it will be, it will be established 
unto us and the light of God will shine upon our ways. Hallelujah. We can speak and see mountains move. Literally, they move. He didn't say we had to move the mountain. He just said, say it, believe it, have faith in me, and I'll do it for you. And now some people get tripped up and I would hear this and I'm going to be, be, I'm just being real. I would hear this and it used to cause me some confusion. It would say, but if, what if it's not God's will? You, you're praying out of God's will. You're praying out of God's will. Well, to ask for abundance in my finances, to ask for abundance in any area in my life is not outside of the will of God. Um, and I say that because he says that he's come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So how do we know the will of God? As I stated here on this podcast before, we study his word, we read his word, we listen to sermons, and then we rightly divide the word of truth. How do we do that? We ask the spirit of God to help us do that. We help, we ask him to give us revelation, to give us understanding, to give us wisdom. His word says that he will give unto those who ask of him liberally the the wisdom that they request, right? So the title prepare you means to prepare for the things that you have asked God for. Prepare for those things. Like literally, if I already know it's done, if I truly believe this scripture, then I'm just going to keep working this business. And I'm going to keep believing God for this child and thanking him every day for healing my children, delivering them, protecting them, keeping them. <clears throat> Whatever your it is. And I need you to know that there is nothing too hard for God, but there's also nothing that's too small for God. So often we think that God doesn't care about the small things or what we might consider small, but honestly, everything is small to God, to the great big mighty God that we serve, who owns everything, who has power and control over everything, every, anything we can ask of him is small. But I want you to know that God literally cares about the small things the small things as much as he does the things that you consider to be large things. So ask God for all of the things, believe God for all of the things, speak to the things that's in front of you and believe that those things will move out of your way. Believe that you are delivered. Believe that you are whole. Believe that your that cancer has left your body. Hallelujah. Believe that your 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 ovaries are functioning properly. Believe that your liver and your kidneys are are uh, cleansing your body and producing what they should produce because you believed God for it and you prayed for it and you spoke it. Your, the word also tells us that um, if any are sick among you, to call on the elders and um, have them to anoint and lay hands on you and you will be healed. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's, it, God will send your healing through a child as well. Oh God, I have so many, so many times where my children have just laid hands on me and I have been healed in my body, but also delivered in my mind. There were some things I struggled with and I I wanted to be free of those things and I would beg God and cry out to him and just didn't even know how to get free from some things. And I remember specifically falling on my knees in my living room downstairs at the time we lived in a townhome. And both of my children who were very young came down and put their hands on me. They laid hands on me and they prayed for me. They started praying. They went in. And when I tell y'all God broke that thing off me that day, oh honey. I'm telling you, God will send your, he will send your miracle however he chooses. Your only job is to believe that he can and that he will. So I'm going to get to these footnotes, right? In the footnotes of the Amplified Version of the Bible, it says this. Mark 11, 23, which is the A footnote. It says, Jesus used this moment to emphasize to the disciples that a person's confident, abiding faith combined with God's power can produce absolutely amazing results if the request is in harmony with God's will. God is fully capable of doing that which man regards as impossible. And it gave the reference of James 4 and 3. Again, we know God's will. It's it's simple things like he, it is his will that we should not lack any good thing. It is his will that he will provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. It is his will that we live a whole life. It is his will that we prosper and be in good health as our soul prospers. So those are things we know. We can stand on those things. And then the footnote says this. It says, um... In Mark 11 and 25, standing was a common posture for prayer among the Jews. I shared that and it might seem like it's so random, but in this moment, standing, standing on the word of God is your sure thing 
You can stand on it in the face of any situation, in the midst of any challenge, in the midst of any circumstance, no matter what it looks like, you can stand on the word because God is his word, right? And so he is faithful and just to complete the things that he's promised to us. So prepare for what you've asked for. You believed it, you prayed for it. So now your faith move, your next move is to prepare. There are a few days left in 2022 and it is my belief And I say this in full faith that you will see God produce miracle signs and wonders in your life, in your finance, in your marriage, in your family, in healing, even before this year ends. So don't look at these next few days as wasted days. Continue to declare the word of God over your life. Some of us began uh, uh, confessing some things, declaring some things over our life at the beginning of this year that God would do some things for us in 2022. Well, don't give up on believing that just because today is December 28th because technically we've got this whole day. There's the 29th, there's the 30th and the 31st. You've got four days, including this day, to see miracle signs and wonders. And I declare that God will perform them in your life. Only believe only believe. Hallelujah. Well, you've listened to the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed she who believes. I'll see you back here in 2024. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful, miraculous, mind-blowing, knock your socks off 2023. I think I said 2024, didn't I? Well, I must, I plan to see you then as well. Um, many of you may know I've stated on this podcast that I, 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 I <clears throat> have asked God to give me no less than 110 years on this earth. And I believe him to do that. And I believe that every promise that he has made to my family, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it in that time frame that I'm in the earth, there will be other things I won't see because he'll do those things through my, the generations after me. But I also know that he's made me some promises and I'm believing him for it. Oh, and one more thing before I go, I got to say this. Thank you. Holy spirit. That if where you are right now does not look like what God has promised, or it does not look like what you have prayed, believing according to Mark 11, 23 through 24, then don't give up. Don't allow what you see in the physical to steal what you believe God for and what you have seen in the spirit. Let that be what you see until what you see in the spirit is also the exact same thing that you see in this physical realm. Don't give up. Keep your eyes focused on what is true and continue to walk by faith. God bless you. You've been listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, where we encourage you to stretch your faith and to believe God for the impossible.